In this video we'll be going over the command line. The command line is one of the most important tools you have to learn if you want to use Linux, especially on a cluster. What's a command line? It's a line where you type commands, unsurprisingly. It's also often called the command line interface, CLI. You'll often see the terms console or terminal. And uh, you'll also often see the term shell, especially in this tutorial later, we'll be talking about shells a lot more. The main advantage of the command line compared to graphical user interfaces is uh, that it's very simple. Even if a lot of things about the computer breaks, usually the console still works. It's also fast because you don't have to load a lot of stuff. It's also fast to use uh, in the sense that when you type a command, uh, it executes immediately. You don't have to go through menus and submenus. So if you actually know the commands, then it's also very efficient to use. The last advantage is that it's also easy to program. The same commands that you type into the command line, you can also type into a script. And we'll see how to do that later on in this tutorial as well. The main disadvantage is you have to know the commands. Uh, you have to memorize them. Uh, you don't have buttons where you can read what it says on it like in a GUI. Why is it called a shell? That goes back to one of the core concepts of Linux. The console is really below everything. And every program that's running is running within a specific console. And often that console is running inside another console. Uh, so you really have the structure where you have programs contained within a shell. And that's where the name comes from. That also means that you have to be aware where you are. It's easy to get lost, for example, confusing whether you are on the cluster or on your local PC. If you go into a shell, there might be things that aren't available in another shell. Uh, we'll see a couple more in this course. And if you close a shell, everything that's running within that shell gets stopped as well. So always be aware of uh, what you're closing and in which shell you are and what's running in it. This is what you see when you open the console. Uh, that's called the command prompt. And it consists of a couple elements which I'd like to go through now. First of all, you can see that uh, it always shows your username. And uh, it always shows the computer uh, which we are on. It's called the host name in Linux. Additionally, what you're seeing there is the directory where you currently are. That's called the working directory. In this case, uh, it's shorthand for your home directory. We'll go over that later. But uh, in general, it will at least show the last part of the directory name there. Next one is called the actual command prompt. Uh, and that's where the text appears when you start typing. You can see that there's this dollar sign in front of it, then a space, and then where the text appears that you would type. It's a very common convention. And you will often see in online help, for example, that commands are noted with that dollar sign in front of it. You don't need to type that dollar sign that's always there. This is what it looks like when you type an actual command. A command will of course tell the computer what to do. In this case, it will print the computer name. You can see that the command has the actual command name, then a space and then what's called an option for the command that depends entirely on the command. Many commands have uh, different options. They're also called arguments that uh, direct the command what to do. And in the next line, you can see the output from the command. It's completely up to the program what output appears here. Additionally, after the command has finished executing, you will see the command prompt shows up again and you can type in the next command. While the command is running, uh, you cannot type anything else. Uh, you can see that the command prompt is at the front of an empty line. And uh, when the command is done running, you will see what you're seeing above here with the, with the new command prompt. And here's what it looks like in action. Uh, you can see the command prompt. If I press enter, it simply shows up again. And if I type in a command, press enter, the command gets executed. The most important keys that you need to know, of course, enter runs the command. And you can go through previous commands that you have typed with the up arrow and down arrow keys. That simply makes it easier for you. You don't have to type the same command multiple times. You can just press up arrow, enter, 
and it will run the same command again. There's also a very practical feature that's called auto-completion, also called tab completion, and that's if you type the first part of a command and Linux knows which command you're trying to type and then you press tab, it will complete the rest of the command for you. If Linux doesn't know what command you mean, for example, there are too many possibilities that start with the same letters, it will show nothing. In that case, you can press tab a second time and Linux will show you a list of options uh, of what commands uh, fit the pattern. In this case, for example, I, if I type the command sbatch, I can simply type uh, sba since it's unique. If I press tab, it completes the command. If I were to type only sb, the first tab did nothing, the second one showed me the options. You can see there's three different commands that start with sb. If it's too many options, for example, if I were only to type s and then tap tap, it would show me how many possibilities there are. And optionally, I can display them, all 250 of them, or I can decline. Finally, there's the key combination control C that aborts whichever command is currently running, for example, if it's stuck. Linux commands are always case sensitive. If I were to type the command that I just demonstrated with a capital S, it wouldn't do anything because there's no command with uh, that name with a capital S. One more thing about command line options. It's really up to the developers of the program what options to put after the name. However, there are a couple of conventions uh, which are really followed by most programs nowadays. Uh, it's very common that you see this, an option. It starts with a minus sign and uh, then one or more letters after it. And if that option needs a parameter value, uh, that's then the next option. It's also common that you see this kind of full name command here having two dashes, two minus signs in front of it, and then there be a shorthand for the same command for the most commonly options that only is one dash and one letter. But like I said, it's up to the programmer. It is, there's absolutely no guarantee that it has to look like this. Now, how do you find out which commands you need and what they do? The simplest option, of course, is to Google it. On the subject of Linux in particular, there's a lot of internet help and websites uh, that are dedicated to explain the various commands. The documentation for a lot of programs is also online. I would like to especially point out the Stack Overflow and Stack Exchange network of sites. Um, they're kind of a discussion and question and answer forum. And often when you Google uh, something about Linux, uh, that those will be one of the first search hits. There is, however, also a built-in help function into Linux. It's called man pages, man for manual. And you can do that very simple. You just type in the console man and then whichever command you want to display the help about. Uh, there's absolutely no guarantee that there actually is a main page for a command. It's again up to the developer of that particular program. But it's very common, especially for commands that come with Linux, to have detailed help pages. And they, you can display those with the man command. In addition, a command will often have a minus h or minus minus help or similar option. That's again up completely up to the developer, but uh, many commands have this and often it will just display the man page or some short version thereof so uh, you can quickly get an overview. Before you start to do anything, it's one more important thing. The console has no undo function. In other words, if you type in a command and you break something, you can't undo it. There are also very few safety features in the sense that there's a, are you sure you want to do that? Please confirm dialogues. And if you're the root user, can theoretically uh, destroy the entire system with one command. If you're a regular user, you can still theoretically destroy all your files by accident with one command. So the most important rule for that is that uh, whenever you use Linux, you don't run a command when you don't understand what it does. Often on the internet, you will find trolls uh, trying to uh, convince others to run this command that you see here. That command will delete all files on the computer. So just be careful that uh, prank is so common that nowadays this command actually has an, an additional safety feature that ensures that you can't do that but just to be on the lookout for idiots. 
Additionally, if you run a command, you always have to be sure you're in the correct directory. And um, we won't cover root much in this tutorial because you can't do it on the cluster anyway. But the root is basically the top administrator uh, in Linux uh, can do everything and you should only switch to the root if you absolutely have to. So you don't break anything by accident. Also, when you type a command in, always be on the lookout for spelling errors.